Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and here are all of the books that I ended up reading in March. I ended up reading 21 books in the month of March. I'm very excited to show you all of the books that I read and if I talk about a book in a specific video that I've already posted, I'll be sure to link them down below to show you my in-depth thoughts so you can go check out my in-depth thoughts of them. So first, the one DNF that uh, I did um, is Heartless by Cat Martin. I have a whole entire video talking about why I DNF'd it. Um, every single month I pick a book out of this jar. Where is it? This this jar, but I have to read it and do a dedicated reading vlog on it um, so that I can read more of my backlist of my TBR and hopefully make some bookish content out of it. Um, there is a hair on my face. So this is a historical romance that I honestly don't even remember the plot at the moment. I just, I don't. And um, dang, what is on my eye? If you wanna know what this book is about and why I very much disliked it to a point where I had to DNF it, which I would not normally do for a dedicated reading vlog, for a vlog in general, um, go check out my vlog thumbnail. I look very happy and excited to read this book. I took that thumbnail before I started the book. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing that anymore. <laughs> where I like take the thumbnail before I actually read it because I did not like it. <laughs> so yeah, DNF for this one about is it 50 percent i don't i have no idea i'm done with this i'm done so as usual we're going to be talking about my books from my least favorite to my favorite read of the month so first we're going to be talking about indulging her by leah ellen i ended up giving this book 2.5 out of 5 stars and i read this for the kindle clear art readathon this one is an lgbtq plus romance because both of the characters in here in this romance are um women or i was about to say lesbians but i don't know what they are actually they're just they're both women they love each other um so I go in depth in that vlog again like I talked about earlier. A bunch of these are kind of fuzzy because it's been a while since I've read some of them um, but I do remember this one is about um, a heroine who owns a bakery and her romance with a uh, self-made billionaire she's met and the premise sounded really interesting. I haven't read a billionaire romance in a while um, but there just wasn't really all that much romance and it was like they look at each other and then they realize that they're in love and it just it wasn't that great to me and plus like the main focus of the book I didn't feel like was the romance it was the heroine's bakery which sounded amazing like I love bakeries but like no one would come to her bakery like no one went there and all she did was complain about how no one came to her bakery the whole time so wasn't my favorite thing ever <laughs> then we have the alien assassin's convenient wife by ruby dixon i'm trying to read all of ruby dixon's backlist in hopes of making a um guide to ruby dixon video later on it's kind of bizarre that's why i only gave it three stars um this alien he has been like tasked to be a bounty hunter on earth the guy he's trying to like kill this sorry if the armchair of this chair is right here i'm very sorry if you can see it i have my computer on it and there's not a lot of room in space um here Okay, I fixed it. <laughs> so this assassin has been tasked to kill this guy who's escaped to Earth. He tracked him down and turns out he's in this place, like a couple's retreat place, and nobody will let him in it unless he's married. And so he like tries to download like a dating app or he does download a dating app and he like puts in his bio, I need a wife as soon as possible so that he can get into this retreat. <laughs> Our heroine's like friend is the one that like controls her dating app like her friend like is the one setting her up on dates she sets her up on this date uh, with this guy and turns out he wants to get married and she learns that he's an alien and she helps him do this bounty hunting thing and goes to the couple's retreat and it's not actually a couple's retreat and it's it's very bizarre very strange <laughs> not my favorite ruby dicks and probably one of my least favorite but it was still it was, it was hilarious to read about in all honesty. Then I have another Ruby Dixon that is also a three star. We have Deceiving the Corsair by Ruby Dixon. I believe this is book number four in the Corsair series. I have book number, I believe three later on in this video. Um, but this one I ended up just giving three stars. It just, it wasn't my favorite thing ever. <laughs> I keep saying that. This series is all about space pirates. And I believe that this one is about um, like kind of like the loner space pirate on this pirate ship um, He has his three friends who are also on this pirate ship with him like the space pirate ship And they've all found their mates in like the previous books and like he hasn't found one yet So he's kind of like the loner guy and it turns out he like has developed like a 
online relationship with this woman who's on another pirate spaceship um and little does he know that she's actually human he thinks that she is like of his same alien race the masaka um but she's not and the reason why she won't like show her face is because he thinks that she's a masaka and he's like said multiple times how he doesn't find humans attractive and all that stuff and so she's never showed her face to him and it's been a while since like it's they've never seen each other in person and then like he finally wants to see her in person and he goes out of his way to try and find her he just wants to go claim his mate like he are has already realized through like his communication system and everything with her for a while that that is his mate and so he goes to go find her and um he realizes who she really is this isn't my favorite ruby dixon ever i know that people actually love this book in the series my main issue is that we didn't really see them falling for each other if that makes sense because when you start the book you learn that he has been communicating with this woman online for quite a while and he's already said that he's like basically in love with her and we didn't really read about like how that happened you know that was my only thing i wish we got that if we got that maybe my rating would be different i just i just wanted to know how they fell for each other and like know like firsthand how if that makes sense that's what i like in romance so then i have once upon a winter's eve by tessa dare i believe this is number 1.5 a part of the spindle cove series this is a historical romance novella it's a christmas novella also our heroine lives in spindle cove if you didn't know spindle cove is a small town in england that our heroine from the first book her and her father like built where spinsters can go or um where women can go to escape society and all that stuff and so our heroine she has been like sent to spindle cove by her family like, she was basically sent away because she was ruined because she like was with this guy um that she had long feelings for and turns out he up and left her like just like left and disappeared without a trace um and no one knows where he went then she's in spindle cove months I think even a year later on christmas eve a strange man walks into like the party that they're all having at spindle cove and he like collapses at her feet and he can only speak like f a foreign language that nobody but her knows because she's very good with languages and he may or may not be that same man this just didn't have as much development that i wanted i've read a lot of reviews about this from my friends as well and they found it quite short which i did too i felt like this could probably be a full-length book and it'd probably be way better if it was a full-length book i don't know why it was just a novella again like the previous book i just talked about we didn't really read about them falling for each other at first i love that in my romance so i just ended up giving this one three stars next i have prisoner prisoner of night by jr ward i believe this is book number 16.5 Five or number 16 in the black dagger brotherhood series i honestly can't tell you what this is about <laughs> this is i gave this rating 3.5 stars so i guess i liked it i think it's about like a vampire she like is tasked to go on this mission with like another creature or he's a, also a vampire or he's a different creature i honestly cannot tell you just know that this is book number 16 or 16.5 in the black dagger brotherhood series this series is about the vampire race the secret vampire race that is on earth um and about the black dagger brotherhood which is a group of vampires who are tasked to protect the vampire species from these evil dudes and this one didn't affiliate with the brothers at all and so all new characters wasn't my favorite thing ever because like you didn't get, get to see the previous characters that i love um so i just ended up giving this one 3.5 out of 5 stars Ooh, i'm sorry i can't tell you like what the summary is because honestly cannot tell you like i have no idea then i have queen size by jessica kane i read this for the kindle clear out readathon so you can check my blog out to know more thoughts about it from me this is a royalty romance where our hero is a king and our heroine is a woman who is trying to find a husband there's basically i believe they're called the bride games that take place every year i think it's a bride auction actually where it's the bride games and at the end of the bride games there's a bride auction to where men can auction and like buy at the highest price like what bride they want um so our heroine um her parents just recently died and so she's having to take care of her two younger sisters and so the only way that they can like keep their farm that they live on is for her to put herself in the bride games and in this auction and so in the bride games i think like the challenges are you have to bake something of course and then the other one is like a, a miles long trek like like to show you're strong like buckets of water on your body and then there's something else i don't remember honestly our heroine has been like put in these bride games and our hero is the king one of the kings of the land before the bride games there's always like this um like ball or party beforehand and so 
he sees this woman there and he's always been like saying to his like advisors he's like i'm not gonna take a wife i don't want a wife i think he's like had trouble with his parents like his parents have tainted marriage for him and so he just has never wanted a wife he doesn't want one and then he sees our heroine and he's like I don't want a wife but i want her to be my mistress she looks gorgeous this is also a plus size rep in here so she is plus size he is just infatuated by her and i think he also says like he is bigger than her because at first i think at one point she's like well can't you see my size like um like aren't i too big for you and he's like are you kidding me i am like a giant like like that doesn't even matter to me you're small compared to me like it doesn't even matter anyway and just like i i really liked that part of it it's not my favorite royalty romance in all honesty um just because his whole issue with marriage really just grated on me for a while because i felt like it got on it went on for too long even if this was a novella um but jessica knows how to write some steamy times so that was quite enjoyable <laughs> next you're going to be talking about two required reads that i had for school that were actually pretty good all the, the rest are four stars until I get to the five stars and so on. I'm giving both of these books four stars. So first we have a very bizarre cover of Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. Very bizarre. I showed my professor this and she was like baffled by it. It's honestly, it's, I think it's cool, but this is not the normal cover for Howl's Moving Castle. I never heard about Howl's Moving Castle before I took this class, like ever. I've never read it. I didn't know it was a thing. Apparently it's a staple in young adult literature. I read this for my young adult literature class if you didn't know. This is a book about Sophie and they all live in this magical land where magic is like normal and everything and um in this land there's like a castle that like moves like that has like feet that like walks throughout the land and like um Howl the wizard lives in that castle and so this book starts out with Sophie I believe she's 16 and she's been working in this hat shop. She lives quite a boring life until one day uh this evil witch the witch of the waste comes and puts a curse on her to where everybody sees or turns she turns sophie into an old woman essentially so sophie is an old woman she, she becomes an old woman like she acts like a cranky old woman she becomes an old woman the 16 year old is put in this old woman body and then she like decides to go find howl and hopefully howl will help her get rid of this curse on her and I found this to be so fun. I felt like I would have loved this if I was a kid and I wish I read this as a kid. I never heard about this before this class. And honestly, I thought it was just so much fun and the audiobook was fantastic. Um, so you have kiddos of your own um, who love like magical stories. Please pick up this book. I felt like, I feel like like maybe even middle school would love this book as well. I, I had so much fun reading this. And then I have Under a Cruel Star, A Life in Prague from 1941 to 1968 by Hedda, Hedda Kovali, sorry. Um, I read this for my Eastern European class and this was quite interesting. Um, this talks about, this is a memoir by Hedda Kovali and she lived in Prague after World War II and she talks about her experiences during and after World War II because you get to see her, she was, she's Jewish. Um, she was in concentration camp. She ended up escaping. You see that whole occurrence. You read about her experience doing that. You read about her experience being discriminated against and um, just her experience essentially also with communism after World War II and communism coming to power and why her and her husband ended up joining the communist party and like how it affected her and Eastern Europe as a whole, specifically Czechoslovakia. I cannot say that word ever. Czechoslovakia. There you go. And you get to see her slowly start to realize how communism is not what she thought it was and it is not what she signed up for at all. And if you didn't know, there's like this big trial that happened in Eastern Europe um, during this time called the Slanks Slanksly Slanky trial. I can't pronounce that ever. So in that trial, 12 innocent, they learned innocent men were tried and found guilty of going against the communist government who were all officials of the communist government. Most of them, I think only two survived, two were executed all but two were executed and one of them was her husband this was quite interesting and i felt like this was a non-fiction book that just like enlightened me about the time um because you don't really read about why communism was so appealing to eastern europeans because in america we know like communism is messed up like it's messed up and so you don't understand like like why people are asking like why did why did these people want to join this party and in this book you get to see like the appeal that it had to so many people and they just they didn't know any better it was quite interesting and i wrote a whole paper on it and thankfully i got a good grade on it so yeah so next we have the royal we by heather cox and jessica morgan this is a kind of like a reimagining and retelling of william and kate kind of uh, so our heroine, her name is 
Rebecca, Bex, and then there's uh, Nick. Nick is going to be the King of England one day. He's uh, has he's in line for the throne. That's what I, the phrase I was looking for. Um, and Bex is actually an American and she decides to go to college in England and there she meets Nick and they become friends and then it turns into something more. The beginning of their romance is very much like William and Kate. I used to watch documentaries or watched plenty of documentaries years ago about William and Kate and how they met and everything. It just, it's a reimagining of that, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to go too much into it because I feel like it would spoil stuff. Um, but I, it was, it was insane because I finished this book the day that the Oprah Winfrey interview came out. I had no idea the interview was coming out at all. <laughs> It was crazy to me. I found that to be such a big coincidence, um, but I found this overall to be quite entertaining and like the beginning of it and how they meet is definitely, I feel like, inspired by William and Kate, but the rest of it, it turns into his own unique story, which I found was super interesting. This mainly like touches upon, like this is a romance between the two of them, but I feel like it touched a lot on like media and everything and how like the paparazzi and media can really screw screw you so it's quite interesting i gave this one four stars okay y'all it is shout out time we're gonna stop the video for a second and i'm going to shout somebody out for my shout out mug let's pick this one right here who is it who is it oh my goodness it is kayla Ooh, can you see that kayla from on the fritz <laughs> um Kayla, I love her so much. She also has a deep love for alien romances. She reads a bunch of Ruby Dixon as well. Um, and I love her so much for that. So yes, Kayla is another romance booktuber. Um, she reads predominantly romance. I'm pretty sure that's the only thing she reads. Um, she collects so many fun historical romances. I believe she's trying to collect a certain like, um, like I think they're like the zebra ones. I think she's trying to collect all of those. And I've been watch I've been watching her like journey to try and find all of them or most of them. And I I love that. And she's also from Texas as well. And so she's trying to find a bunch of historicals that have Texas in the title that are set in Texas. And I wish I could do that. <laughs> I want Texas historicals. Um. So I've been loving her like videos so much. And just I love her love for alien romances as well. I feel like there's not a lot of us who love alien romances as much as us. So I just love Kayla oh so very much. Please go check. Her out. I'm linking her down below. She deserves so much love. Another four star is Only Breath Apart by Katie McGarry. Um, this is a young adult romance or just a young adult contemporary. Um, this is about our hero and his his parents or his parents, his his grandmother. He lived with his grandmother. His grandmother has passed and he owned she owns this land and he is in love with this land. He grew up on this land. His, it's been in his family for generations. Since he is not over the age of 18, he cannot like have the land yet and so his uh i think his grandmother like put some stipulations in her will for him if he wants his land by the time he turns 18 he has to get approval from three people one of which is the girl that he um basically abandoned in high school uh, like through to the wolves essentially and that is our heroine what is her name her name is uh scarlet Scarlett and Jesse. Scarlett and him used to be best friends as kids because they're neighbors. She has the land next door to him. They grew up being best friends and then something happened in high school to where he basically started bad mouthing her and stopping her friend and she has no idea why. Um, and so as a stipulation for getting his land that he wants, um, he has been tasked by his grandmother. He has to get approval from three people, one of which is Scarlett. He's always seen Scarlett as this prim and proper perfect girl with the perfect life and that is not the case whatsoever. Nobody knows that Scarlett has a horrible, horrible home life. So trigger warning for domestic abuse. In here i feel like people who have experienced something like scarlet has could really relate to this and because she really goes she really learns how to become herself and like learns how to become an independent person despite the overbearing father figure in her house and her learning how to overcome the abuse that she's faced and how to truly become her own person in spite of everything that she's gone through so i found that to be like amazing i really liked that and their romance was pretty sweet i really recommend this if you really like young adult literature because like i just i don't read i don't see a lot of people reading this one and i feel like this would be like a really hard hitting but also um cute romance to read about next we have beautiful boss by christina lauren um i'm gonna go quickly with this one because it is a novella in a series i believe it's number 4.5 if i'm not mistaken just a short little novella um, about one of our characters in the previous book they got married and our heroine is getting a job and there's like like some talk about her getting a job and her not having time for her future husband and 
I honestly don't remember a lot because I believe this was my first read of the month, um, but it's just a novella part of the beautiful beautiful bastard series by christina lauren um and i have one more book to read in that series and i think i'm completed so i'm very excited to continue on with it i also gave that one four stars another christina lauren book that i ended up picking up is sweet filthy boy this one was a one night stand to more romance that's in vegas so our hero and heroine end up getting like wasted um in, in vegas they meet in vegas and um they accidentally along with like a couple other people in their friend group end up like getting married <laughs> like they wake up and they're married she has an overbearing home life and she doesn't want to be at home anymore she's about to start college this was the she went on this trip with her friends the summer for, before college started there she meets her hero they have that whole thing happen to them and he asks her to come to be with him in Paris for the summer because he lives in Paris he's French and so she takes a risk and decides to go spend the summer with her husband even though they say that they're probably gonna get annulled after all of this uh why not just have some fun in Paris together so um, I found this to be super fun. I just, I didn't like the conflict. I don't like X conflict when X's come back into the picture. So that's why I docked a star for me and I ended up giving this one four stars. Oh, I also read that during the Kindle Clear Readathon. If you want to know more of my thoughts, be sure to check the link down below. Then I have Enticed by the Corsair by Ruby Dixon. I believe this is book number three, a part of the Corsair series. I also give this one four stars. Again, this is a part of the same pirate ship crew that I talked about earlier. The book starts out with our hero, um, and all of his other crewmates like commandeering this spaceship filled with kind of like evil aliens. They know that they're skeevy and sketch. They like are checking out like what to take out of the ship and what to take for themselves. And they find a room full of dead human women, like dead, like it is grotesque, tortured dead women everywhere. And they think that everyone in the room is dead until they hear a woman who is alive out of the bunch and she is in a cage and has been tortured by these aliens trigger warning for like <laughs> graphic things um they took out her eyes so she cannot see like they took out her eyes to torture her and so she cannot see anymore and so this book is about our heroine like overcoming her abuse that she has suffered and this trauma that she's gone through and our hero being super sweet and considerate and falling for her they fall for each other she like has to learn how to be like a normal person again being blind because she was not blind before obviously and our hero helps her through that and helps her discover who she is now as a person after everything that she's gone through i found that to be so amazing um so i ended up giving this one four stars then i have um another ruby dixon book we have ice planet honeymoon rook and harlow's story by ruby dixon this is i believe novella 4.5 this is just a short little novella part of the ice planet barbarian series um all about a honeymoon after um their, their, their like main book i really liked this because harlow and rook are one of my favorite characters in the ice planet barbarian series if you didn't know ice planet barbarians is an alien romance series um that takes place on an ice planet aliens and human women their mates involved i really enjoy this series um i ended up giving this one four stars another ruby dixon book i think this is the last one on the list um we have barbarian's bride by ruby dixon i believe this is book number 17 18 19 i don't know it's the last book in the ice planet barbarian series last one so in the last couple books she's been going back and doing these books in flashbacks of how some of our couples who were first mated didn't get their own book and so she's going back and writing their love stories and showing them how they fell in love and first got mated i also read this during the kindle claire readathon so more my thoughts in that video um i don't really remember all that much i didn't love this book as much as some other ones i did feel sad at the end because it was the end it's like the last main book in the series like the main thing in here is our hero and heroine they ended up mating like the first or becoming mates like the first like day that they crash landed or they met each other she like doesn't know how to tell this guy that like she kind of likes like kind of like rougher bedtime you know and um because these men are quite like gentle and kind to women and doesn't think women should be abused in any way shape or form she has like tried to tell him in the past that she kind of likes this and he's been like horrified and so like she's not kind of like getting everything she needs in that regard and so um he's trying to figure out like what is upsetting his mate because he can see something's upsetting her and so uh yeah this my main issue here was like the communication if she just would have talked to him it probably would have been better but I still really enjoyed it and gave it four stars. Then we have The Initiation by Nikki Sloan. I also read this during the Kindle Clear at Readathon. You can know more of my thoughts down there. I go way in detail about my thoughts in that. 
um, but basically this one is about our heroine. She's kind of like in a arra arranged marriage kind of with this like up and coming CEO of this company. He's about to be inducted into this company, but they have to go through a ceremony and initiation to be able to put him in the company. And our heroine has to go into a boardroom with all of the other board members and something happens. I know that's very vague, but it's, it's, it's pretty steamy just going for it. I kind of assumed what the initiation was going to be in it, but then the ending, you can know my reaction in my video, in my vlog, um, it's, it, it threw me for a loop, the ending, so <laughs> give that one also four stars. Then we have uh, Rustic Hearts by Amber Kelly. This is a buddy read with my friend Zay over at Witty Reads on Instagram. I'll link her down below. I absolutely adore her. Um, so we picked this one to read. You can read it off of Kindle Unlimited, um, and this one is a small town romance. She, to she told me that she thought of it as like another version of The Simple Wild, and I totally agree. Um, if you love The Simple Wild, you might really like this book. This deals a lot with family and kind of like a hate to love relationship where a heroine comes from like New York and she has to come to like a farm that she grew up on um, and try and get reacquaint re reacquainted, there you go, reacquainted with her like previous life living on a farm and our hero works on that farm. And so it's kind of like a butt heads, hate to love romance, different kind of like views on life coming together, um, but we really liked the familiar familial dang i can't talk familial part in this book just because you see a lot of her like reconnecting with her family um because she and her mother like moved to new york when she was little um and she always thought like her dad abandoned her because she hasn't talked to him since but her grandma died and she comes home for the funeral and ends up staying with them and um she thinks this whole time that her father just left them um, to go marry the other woman, but there may be more to the story than she is thinking. Um, so we both found this to be really enjoyable, we really love the family aspects in here, and I really recommend if you love The Simple Wild, please check out this book. Next we have my two 4.5 star reads. Um, first we have Brooklyn Air by Serena Bowen. I also read this during the Kindle Clear Readathon. Again, know my thoughts in that vlog. Um, but basically this is kind of like a friends to lovers kind of, an, an unrequited love romance. Our hero is a billionaire and he owns this, he owns, he owns this hockey team and our heroine is his like personal assistant has been for a while and like he's always crushed on her like had a huge crush on her i guess like he never thought that she could like him back this live romance between the two of them she kind of gets like hurt there's a caretaking scene in here he like takes care of her and she like slowly starts to like realize oh my gosh maybe what i've been looking for this whole time in a man has actually been in front of me the whole this whole time i found it to be very enjoyable if you love kind of like nerdier heroes i really liked that i he's a nerdier hero um so i really recommend this one for that and then my other 4.5 star read is darling beast by elizabeth hoyt this was my first elizabeth hoyt book i really wanted to read dearest rogue which that is the book everyone's been recommending to me um because the heroine is blind to that one and so i think i watched jessica from beast love books um her video where she uh was recommending this book but pe but she said to read the book before that before reading this one because you get more context which I think it does. Um, I think I probably should have read them all the way through starting at book one because I know that other people are doing that right now. Um, but I was too impatient because I really just wanted to read about Phoebe. <laughs> which I didn't read her book until April so that's not in this video but this one is about a hero and a heroine our hero is actually mute in here um he has escaped prison because he was put in prison for something he did not do while he was in prison he was beaten really badly and basically kicked in the throat multiple times and so he cannot speak anymore and he hasn't spoken like he just hasn't spoken since um and our heroine is a very popular actress in society she's also a single mother and so she lives in this um, abandoned theater or this theater that was burned down that was very popular and our hero has been tasked to secretly so that the authorities don't find him secretly rebuild this garden that is like outside of the theater that was very popular and so our heroine like comes across him while he's in the garden and he scares her at first because he's like covered in mud cannot speak but her son befriends him and thinks that he's like some amazing guy and just wants to hang out with him and so she reluctantly starts to like like him for her son's sake and then she starts to like realize that she actually has feelings for this man i really really enjoyed this one my only reason for docking it a half star is because of the mute representation in here i don't want to like spoil it but like he's not mute the whole time and like the like his transition into not becoming mute the whole time like just was not all that realistic to me. His sudden like ability to speak just like 
that kind of rubbed me the wrong way in all honesty um so <laughs> i just docked half a star for that but overall i really 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 enjoyed this romance and if you love like steamy historicals that are super well written please check out elizabeth hoyt because i feel like i just want to go read all of her backlist now i, ju I just do <laughs> okay we're almost done i have two more books to talk about and they're both five stars um and one of them is a reread which is the problem with forever by jennifer l armitrout i'll quickly talk about this one because it is a reread um but this is a book that has mute representation in here this is also a new adult romance by the way our heroine mallory she grew up in the foster care system um with being abused um one day when she's at the hospital after being abused by her foster father um one of the doctors sees her there and ends up adopting her and so it's years later and she's been homeschooled this whole time um she has trouble speaking because she grew up in this foster home like being told not to talk at all and so it's kind of been like wired in her brain just not to talk it's now about to be her senior year of high school and she decides to go and be brave and actually like go to a public high school for her senior year of high school um because she's been homeschooled this whole time and so her parents allow her to do this they encourage it and on her first day of school there she sees her old foster brother writer and it is a, a romance between the two of them i found this to be super sweet one of my favorite romances of all time i swear i i will love this book forever <laughs> and lastly my favorite book of the month was actually a classic and i read it for a class <laughs> i read Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery for the first time for my young adult literature class and oh my word y'all I had no idea how sweet this was I have watched the show end with an E and I really enjoyed it I'm really sad it's discontinued um they're not gonna make any more in that series but oh my gosh this book was so super cute so super sweet I connected to Anne so much and I wish I read this book as a kid but this gave me like the same feelings I get when I read Little Women like Little Women is one of my favorite books of all time and I just love the family aspect in here and the love in it and just like the character driven books like this is such a character driven book it's about Anne like it's just about Anne like living her life and finding a home and Oh my gosh i love this book so much if you have not read this and like you love young adult literature like please read this it was so super cute and one of my new favorites of all time so there you have it those are all the books that i ended up reading in march um please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to but anyways thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all